Hello there. Last night, our British farmers descended on London in strength. And what a show it was. I was in London last night for the farmers' tractor protest, which was due to descend on Parliament Square at about 6pm. It was a dry and chilly evening, but the farmers did not disappoint and there was massive support for them. The convoy of vehicles was well over a hundred and maybe as many as a hundred and fifty, and many of these are not exactly small units to navigate the streets of London. They started in New Covent Garden Market and made their way eventually up Abingdon Street to the southeast corner of Parliament Square, arriving just after 6pm and proceeded very slowly clockwise around Parliament Square. I was stationed in the southwest corner by the Nelson Mandela statue, so the loud blaring horns were just a few yards away behind me at their closest point. I'll fast forward through most of it at various points so you can get the overall picture. The farmers came with full lighting and sound and as the sun went down sometimes looked more like a Christmas carnival than a protest. I did try to do a running commentary but the almost continuous sound of horns would probably have drowned me out. Oh, and thank you to all the people who came up to have a quick chat. And one even generously bought me coffee and sandwiches. A very big thank you. And just for info, agricultural equipment is exempt from Sadiq Khan's ULES money grab. And there were a small group of anti-ULES protesters also circulating with the farmers. And there's one of the anti-ULES protest cars that kept circulating Parliament Square. Now I did hear a rumour that one lot of tractors had been pulled over by the police at about 3pm yesterday as they made their way to London, but as yet I've seen no reports to confirm this. And I also heard there was one minor altercation between the police and the farmers. But apart from that, the go-slow gridlock protest appeared to go off pretty seamlessly. The farmers, as you will see from the video, are protesting about poor quality food being allowed to be imported from abroad. Food that sells at reduced cost, so undercutting our home production. And as our farmers have to adhere to very stringent standards, it's downright unfair and also puts our UK food security at severe risk. They're also protesting at the downright immoral practice of mislabelling food. You know, like stuff that gets imported but then gets packaged here and as a result is rebranded as British food. Then there's the matter of farmers potentially being forced to give over 20% of their arable land to rewilding and planting trees. Something that will cut farming yields, once again hitting our food security. Oh, and the only Londoner not perturbed by all of this was, I'm reliably informed, an Egyptian goose that seemed completely comfortable with all the hustle and bustle around it. Now the issue here is that many people rightfully worry about the damage the WEF-driven establishment is doing to our agriculture. Farming is becoming harder and more costly as it is bound in more and more red tape. And then our farmers have to compete with cheap inferior mislabeled foreign produce. And this can only have one outcome, UK farming shutting down. 
something that our political masters would rather like to see because it would reduce the UK domestic carbon footprint and they would be able to circle the world in their foreign jets and say, look, we've no manufacturing or farming, so we're the greenest of the green. But please will you sell us some of your steel, cars, food and aeroplanes? <laughs> It seems they want to offshore everything. As one leaflet distributed last night says, without farmers, the future. State-owned, corporatized, high-tech farming producing unnatural, unhealthy food, e.g. GMO, soya, insect biomass, farmed by robots and drones. Now that is a WEF-inspired corporatist dream. Because once they get their greedy claws on that, the price of food will mysteriously skyrocket. You just know it will. So as far as I'm concerned, they can just f*** off with it. But at present, there appears to be a concerted and very intense effort to bring farmers across the Western world into penury and extinction. And the farmers are right. If this hammering of UK agriculture continues, food shortages will ensue. Just like the warnings now coming out about potential electricity blackouts due to this madcap drive to net zero. Now, the grassed area of Parliament Square had been cordoned off, presumably to stop tractors mounting the kerb and plonking themselves there. Now, as I said, I had originally set myself in the southwest corner of Parliament Square, next to the statue of Nelson Mandela, and videoed the whole procession as it then arrived and travelled clockwise around the square and then down past Parliament towards Westminster Bridge. But the tractors then took a return route at some point that took them through Whitehall and Parliament Street to take them right back to Parliament Square. It was at this point that the massive convoy of tractors was halted for a while, before being split, and the latter portion was held back by the police. I think the authorities had had enough by then. As you can see, it was now dark, as it had taken a couple or three hours to get this far, and there was a group of police liaison officers going through the convoy to keep people informed of what was going on, or not going on. I walked along the convoy and it just seemed to go on forever. But it wasn't just the tractors threatening to snarl the traffic up. At one point, the police had to cordon off the pedestrian protesters in strength to prevent them spilling onto the roads and shutting traffic down. Now, the government shows little, if any, signs of backing down over agriculture. They want farming gone. Our politicians will tell you that they want to protect our food security. But all you have to do is look at what they say and what they do with our energy security, our border security and our armed forces and security forces to realise what their true game is. And the Labour leader, Keir Starmer, who is preparing for number 10, has articulated what many others in our establishment think. He prefers the Davos WEF way of doing things over that of our parliament. That means no democratic accountability and deals done in secret. Deals that destroy our lives while enriching the few. Do not vote for the Lib Lab Green Con. At the end of the day, we need to back our farmers. Because our government definitely is not doing that. <laughs>